Hello and welcome to Nigeria. Now I'm Sarah Elisha Dashama. We'll be looking at quite a number of issues or matters that arise, you know, and I think it is important that we'll bring it over here and talk about it as we look at Nigeria today. I am Sarah, just like I said, and I'll be doing the program together with Rachel Tanzi. Good afternoon. Afternoon, Sarah. How are you doing? I'm fine. How about you? I'm great. Thank you so much. Remember, we're live on Facebook and on YouTube. You can do well to drop your comment or your contribution on any of the matters that we shall try as much as possible to look at how we can talk about it. And hopefully, we hope that you can also drop your recommendations on some of the way out of all of the things that we will be looking at today. And we want to start with a saga controversy on the issue of the Tinibu's forgery of certificate. It has taken another new turn as a lot of people felt that there was no response coming from the president president or the presidency. But finally the president has spoken and he said that the Supreme Court should dismiss whatever appeal that the PDP and their candidate at Siku have actually submitted to the court. And Richard, I think it's imperative because this whole thing, I remember you and I yesterday yeah. were saying, why don't we just leave this matter to rest? Why don't we just leave Supreme Court to actually decide yeah. whether this certificate forgery is true or not, let the court decide because it seems everybody tends to say something about it. But we've seen that even though a lot of people have come out to say, why is the president not talking? I mean, it seems as if it's only the followers or Kiyamu or somebody that is making response or regarding whether the certificate is actually genuine or not. But the president came out to say he feels that this is an abuse of office and he also feels that this is more like wasting the time of the Supreme Court bringing such a process to the court because whatever the PDP and their candidate talking about articles actually bringing doesn't actually stand the test of time eventually that is literally what the president is saying but looking at the way the whole matter is actually taking the stone richer what do you envision concerning all of this back and forth on the issue of the certificate because it seems at first there were some meeting and appeal that there was exam um, sorry there was election malpractice mm -hmm. during the election a lot of things in was expected and then when the appeal court gave their judgment we're seeing that they are still not comfortable and they have appealed to the supreme court so what do you see in all of these issues as they are unfolding you know um i think the strategy coming from the pdp and atiku is that of course you have to gain you have to take something more to the supreme court if the appeal court is saying all those other technical issues, the uh, malpractice, the voting malpractice, how we saw the election didn't play out as it should, is what the appeal court saw. And I was like, no, it's not enough for us to nullify the election or to not give um, Tinebu his position as the president. And now for Atiku and his team taking it to the Supreme Court, it's like you have to bring more Evidence. to what the appeal court have already given a verdict on. And I believe this is what they are trying to do. Uh, this is what they are doing at the moment is bringing the issue of certificate. And of course, if the president is not certified or don't have a diploma or degree whatsoever, he has no business running the country. He has no business being the president president and then they keep pressing on and they keep pressing on and is is anybody in Tinubu's shoe will say the same thing i can imagine if atiku was the president and Tinubu was the one appealing of course we'll make a statement like um your case mm. is irrelevant or you don't have any base you don't have any facts and all of that so it's, it's all about a matter of side or point of view depending on whose side you're on we saw um the same thing coming where we saw some team or reporters writing from the BBC, we've seen a lot of people also come out to say, okay, there's no fact um, concerning the forging of this certificate. At the same time, we have people also who are coming out and bringing out facts, legit facts, and proof that this certificate it is forged and then is not the accurate thing, it's not the right kind of certificate coming from CSU and all of that. And we've had the back and forth and all of that. I believe at this moment now, is for the Supreme Court to decide, okay, for Tinibu, the, the, the facts coming from Atiku is ir irrelevant, but then it's not his to decide. He has taken up it up as an appeal to the Supreme Court. It is left for them to look into it and then also decide. Of course, um, Atiku and his team will do a lot of digging, uh, bringing out some points, some key factors that 
in as much as being debunked will still stand in the court because this is the major issue now so we'll just have to wait for how things and um, the president is saying it as if his word of mouth can just make the appeal court uh, no it has to follow every legal because it's a file, it's a case, it has been opened, and then it has to be closed in a legal manner, mm -hmm. not just by statement coming from the president for it to not be regarded. So we will just have to wait to see how things will be in court at the Supreme level, and then we will see what will happen. But then I think both parties, with their own perspective, have facts concerning these results and then it will be too early for anybody to just conclude on what the outcome might be at the end of the day until we hear from the Supreme Court whenever they well, decide to sit. You just said it right, Rachel. Yes. So right now you just wait for the appeal court because the judiciary have whatever power that mm -hmm. has been bestowed upon them to do what they feel is right. So you as the executive just mm -hmm. Stay on your lane. Let the judiciary do their do work. Their let them do their finding. Yes. Let them verify if it is. I mean, if the result or the certificate is legit, I think the president has nothing to be afraid of. Oh, of course. It is the responsibility of the opposition party to dig as much as, as they want exactly. to dig. But if you have a skeleton in your locker, you have nothing to be afraid of. So right now, I feel that let the court decide, you just like you rightly stated. The president has no license. You can't just wake up and just use words of mouth to say it should be dismissed. Now, let's look at the today's story, which is talking about CBN lifting the forex ban. To me, it's more like the body, or it's more like the center of this discussion for me mm -hmm. today. Yes, because quite a number of things looking at why, in the initial state, why did we have to stop importation into the country? And quite a number of reasons came. Why? Because at first, I believe the reason why that was, you know, um, the ban was there in the first place was to encourage local manufacturers mm. to also help to appreciate our NARA. Also, to look at the fact that a lot of things are not working as they should be. Now we're seeing that the ban has been lifted, and on about 43 items, some of the items actually got me laughing mm -hmm, because these are items that I just cannot believe that mm -hmm. we are importing in the first place. Now, if you recall, in social media and uh, uh, subsequently, we've been seeing a lot of reports coming from whether BUA wanted to reduce the price of SMIN mm -hmm, and then the fact yes. that whether Dengote also wants to slash the price yes. of SMIN. Now, we're seeing that right now, part of the items that the ban has been lifted on is SMIN. So, yes. of course, this is a threat to producers of SMIN, whether you like it or not, because one thing is for sure, imagine where we have foreign SMIN coming into the country already, mm -hmm. and we know that most times all of these foreign goods are actually cheaper yes. than are locally are, manufactured yes, so that is to say that they have to now be struggling to get their markets back and no wonder a lot of manufacturers are not really excited with this because even the cost of um, materials was already expensive mm -hmm. so not to talk about a time where the government is looking at it now Rachel I took the liberty to check how much in the second quarter of this year we have already spent on importation and we're talking about 5.726 trillion naira just in the second quarter now imagine where we are having the statistics for the third quarter what will it look like now mm -hmm. this is money that I was expecting will be ejected back into our economy looking at how we can start exporting because whether we like it or not there is an implication for actually lifting this ban. If we are importing more than we're exporting, that only tells one thing. It's going to put stress on the um, foreign dollars, and it's going to actually depreciate our naira the more, because we're talking about the law of supply and demand here. And then, whether we like it or not, when we keep de demanding, 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 and we're not supplying anything, yeah. definitely. Our NERA doesn't even have any value because we're actually using the dollar to buy all of this. So right now, Richard, I just want to have your sincere opinion about yeah. this whole situation. Well, Sally, I'm not surprised seeing cement on the list of the things that have been permitted to be imported into the country. If you remember, starting this week, we've seen that the Minister of Works have approved, saying that the federal government have the backing of concrete, concrete roads. roads. And you know, when that was starting to get make waves or headlines, we started having um, we started having marketers, we started having other people complaining that now if the federal government is going to start using cement as um, f um, for road construction, it means there's going to be scarcity of cement. And once there's scarcity of a product, 
there is always an increase in price because once there is high demand okay. with lesser supply, mm -hmm. there's the cost of that um, product, Moving it definitely high. goes high automatically. That's the same mag logic rather that OPEC used to get crude oil to uh, a high level. So it's not surprising that we are since because one of the dangerous seller of um, capitalization or privatization is monopoly. And over the years, we've seen monopoly in cement, in mm -hmm. the cement market mm. in Nigeria. Now, despite BUA stepping in, we are still seeing Dangote's monopoly. And it doesn't give rooms for competition. It just allows what, Venture. in fact, it doesn't even give room for a price ceiling. It's what these monopolies say, the mm. price of this good goes. That is how it goes in the mm. market. So, yes, now bringing in the importation of um, cement into the country kind of breaks that monopoly because now we have importers now uh, on their toes importing this in large quantity because number one, not only do individuals in Nigeria need it, but now the federal government of Nigeria need also it needs it for um, constructing roads. roads. Exactly. And then when you look at other things, right, they comprise of food, steel, iron, and then wood. And then for some reason yesterday, I, I, I made mention about timber, how some, some countries' mm. natural resource is sure. timber. So, of course, you won't see the country that their natural resources, and they have harnessed it to the fullest, importing planks or plywood, the things that we are importing. So the moment we do not take things that we have in the country seriously, put them not only at the we saw concerning illegal mining, whether we like it or not, we have all these steel, zinc, aluminum, Rubber, all the exactly that. that I use to produce these um, pr um, these products, we are still struggling with illegal mining. We are still having the government not in 100% um, 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 control mm -hmm. over the mining of these um, solid minerals. Now, even if Sele Nigeria have the complete control over mining of these solid minerals, we have the issue of industries. Industrialization is still a problem because we need companies, we need industry need process to process this. So whether we like it or not, we are still at the position of exporting raw materials the same way we are doing with our crude oil. We are taking it out and we are bringing back refined um, oil. And despite us being an oil exporting country, we are still buying petrol at an expensive rate. It would have been the same thing for this. So I believe that the, 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 when you give the statistics of the number of how much we could have sink into the country concerning exportation, it should have been done eight years since when this ban was put on these certain goods. Because it, is, it takes time. Because even if the government should take this amount now to put it into the economy, into production of things, we need, we're not going to see the mm. effect in the next two, three. No, it's going to take a long period of time because we have to take our production to the level that can cater for the population of Nigeria, Nigeria before we can now stop with importing, then grow to the level of exporting to other countries. So it is a lot of work. However, it means a lot for the economy. It is 10 step backward in a lot of development areas when it comes to manufacturing things in the country. But at the same time, I believe the CBN is trying to create a balance looking at the hardship in the country and then of course they've seen that we are having a, 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 a weak currency being floated and it hasn't been going well for us. Perhaps now the availability oh, rather than scarcity that's... exactly. Now when you, we will now be in a situation where um, demand doesn't outshine supply. So by the time there is a surplus, there is enough to be supplied. If demand cannot overshadow um, supply, mm. then we can have these goods be at a bearable price because it will still keep going high due to our currency value, but then it will not be as much as mm. what we have witnessed so far in the past two, three years in the country. Now, Rachel, just like rightly explained, we are sounding more like economics on the show today, <laughs> yes, but I think certainly. it is important that we let um, Nigerians know the implication of this, because they whether we to. like it, it has its pros and cons eventually. Yes. Just like you said, right down, opening the borders, all of this good, I mean, something talking about as cheap as toothpick, mm -hmm. it eggs. 
you begin to wonder really yes, so good. we have to import all of this like talking about timber and then which we could actually mm -hmm. use for to pick and smith and all of that but then just like you said i think for me a lot of analysts have been saying the fact that this is talking about trade deficit which you explained earlier mm. on the fact that it just shows that our currency whether we like it or not actually it will depreciate because okay. there'll be no demand for it mm -hmm. if only we are exporting definitely there will be people demand for it will it. be in demand yes. the naira will be in demand but because we are not exporting the dollar right now is what will be on demand. Today we saw where um, our naira is already doing 1,015 naira to a dollar. Mm -hmm. So imagine if that is the price, so imagine as of the end of October, how much are we how going much? to be buying the dollar to the yes. naira? And then with all of this, so quite a lot of things. And then what I'm even scared is the fact that opening of the border will now open Nigeria to being a dumping ground for a lot of foreign products. We've had that issue and in I, the past. We've had that yes. issue and that is what I am afraid of. So I hope that with the opening of this border, it's not all about CBA doing their work, but mm -hmm. I'm hoping that every agent will wake up, wake up. We have to the doing it. Now the customs have to wake up. Yes. NAFTA have to wake have up to because wake we do up. not want to hear some drug pharmaceutical products that do not make sense. So food stuff that exactly. We've us. had issues where processed turkey and chicken have been brought in they already expired, expired yes. so i hope that this will be a wake-up call to all of this agency and body if yeah. the borders have been opened this call for more work it exactly work, rachel sorry. this call for more yes. work now let's round up the show looking at the issue recently i mean was it last week or so you and i were talking about the issue of nigerians in utopia where the senate raised the concern that they mm -hmm. need to go check what is happening yes. where we had about 250 nigerians being detained mm -hmm. And a lot of um, Nigerians were expressing their fear that it's inhuman. And over the years, Nigerians have not been treated well in East Africa, mm -hmm. that country. And then a lot of concern because the concern for refs right now, looking at the fact that they are saying that um, they need to go rescue them, is the fact that a lot of Nigeria were using Ethiopia as an exit point. Yes, and then that point was point why they were being yeah. held now. Quite a number of questions you begin to ask. You mm -hmm. and I have always been saying the fact that if you are registered, if you have your papers proper and your documentation, documents, this exactly shouldn't so happen. Yeah. But we've seen that the committee has been set mm -hmm. up and they have been given three weeks to come up with something tangible to be able to rescue those Nigerians that are there. Now, question for me. Are we saying that Nigerians couldn't have used Ethiopia as an exit point? Mm -hmm. Where were they coming from and how did they land there? Exactly. These are questions that Nigerians mm -hmm. would love to have answers to because... There was not a time where we heard that their country in particular had an issue with Nigeria, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden, something seems not to be going right. So in your own opinion, what do you really think went wrong to the point that we're having this number of Nigerians being held or being detained in that country? You know, Sela, the challenge with this is that the information we have right now is limited because even for um, the, the, the member of the House that brought this up to mm -hmm. the panel, only knows about these um, 250 people and then the reason why they're being detained. However, the, the details into exactly what happened, if, 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 if it's documentation issue or if it's um, illegal uh, migration or something like that, or could it be as a result of a crime? We do not know exactly what is the case for all of these 250 people and then they've been put in different prison for different reasons and for a different period of time. Mm. Now we can't help but speculate. However, it is a normal thing seller, for you to stop to transit to another place. Mm -hmm. That's how traveling happens. It's not all the time you move to where you're going directly. When you're being held or stopped for whatsoever reason or detained, to be investigated, if you are clear, you'll be cleared, and then you will go. If you have your document, if you have your papers, if you're being stopped at the border and you are being asked questions by a patrol team, first of all, say that they don't stop people that they don't suspect something. That is it. It's, it's clear. They don't stop people. It, despite we thinking as Nigerians that we have so much hate coming because of our... We have people traveling in and out of the country. We have still Nigerians having key positions in, um, in, in, in governmental organizations. I mean, in outside world, world organizations outside the countries. We have Nigerians who are still showing that Nigerians are prestigious. So we can't just always sit down and feel it's because of the hate. 
Let's also look at the fact that it's because these 250 people could have been wrong, could have done something somewhere, could have not been doing the right thing, could have not been documented properly, mm. could have just been illegally trying to go to another country because these people also have good security at their borders and it's expected of them to do the needful. And these are all the things that we can only help but to think what could it be. But in the end, I believe at the end of everything, we'll be able to have a, um, a full picture of mm -hmm. the story. What is actually Who are these people? What is actually happening? And of course, they are Nigerians. So regardless of the issue, um, the worst case is for them to be deported back and not be able to go back. And then you still have your country. You come back to it. And since the government are able to step in, I believe that there is hope for these 250 people. Richard, you mentioned, you made a very strong point and I wanted to actually put my strength in the fact that the highest that can happen is for them to be deported. Mm -hmm. So why were they not deported in the first instance? The first why place. are they in prison? Yeah, so, yeah. It's a question, just yes. like you said. So we need to find out, you know, a lot of Nigerians can come and say, could it be that maybe because of our green passport is weak? Because there was a time you and I were talking about mm -hmm. the fact that the green passport does not have the strength that other passports mm -hmm. are having. We're looking forward to it. Did I can actually use my passport to travel to quite a number of countries. Yes. But then maybe it's actually related because I couldn't help but wonder or take my mind back to the issue of Nigerians that were brought back from Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And some of the testimony coming from then, how they actually related, the way they were being treated, True. not Personally. because they were Africans, but because they were Nigerians, yes. were questions that were raised. And I think this has a lot to do with our integrity as a country. Just mm -hmm. like you said, we cannot totally make it a fact that it's a hate because we have Nigerians that are doing well internationally, mm -hmm. yeah, representing the country everything. well. So we cannot yes. totally put a blanket to it and say mm -hmm. this is the reason. But just like this committee, we're being given three weeks. I think we'll also be hoping and keeping our fingers crossed Whatever the issue is, we are hoping to see the chairman of the diaspora students over there, yes. also seeing with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, mm -hmm. what they will be able to come up with something tangible. They'll be able to bring back these Nigerians and whatever the issue is, so we do not have hate between East Africa and West Africa eventually. Mm -hmm. yes, so we hope to see all of these things being rectified. Richard, I think that's how far we can go today. Thank you so much for You're always welcome, doing this sir. with me. And thank you to our viewers for keeping a day with us on Nigerian. Now, not to be come here again. Do have a blessed weekend. Democracy is the theory that common people know what they want and deserve to get it good and hard. Join me every Friday 7 p.m. on National Talk for analysis as well as in-depth perspective on issues as they unfold in and around Nigeria, as well as an opportunity to add your voice. The mandate of reaching out to the world with the message of salvation and truth is a zeal that has consumed us. Equa Television International is live 247, reaching out to the unreached with undiluted message of hope through its programming. You can be part of what God is using us to do by praying for Equa TV and supporting Equa TV. Keep watching. FR Television International. We are a Christian station with the driving force and mandate to reach out to the world with the gospel of salvation and truth through programming and soul lifting events. You can join on this mandate. Let's spread the gospel of truth and salvation to the world. 
Pay for Equa Television. Support Equa Television. Keep watching Equa Television. Sharing with the world the message of truth to help people come to the saving knowledge of our Lord and King, Jesus Christ, as well as find solace in Him. From sermon, theology, undiluted biblical principles, to Christian music and drama that aims to give hope, peace, strength, happiness, as well as strengthen the faith of those who diligently seek Jesus Christ. Hello viewers, my name is Amaka Ocheke. Uh, we anchor the program, The Living Room, right here on Equa TV International. You are welcome to watch us every Monday. The Living Room is a very interesting family program where we discuss everything you want to know about family. We talk about our children's mental health. Keep watching. Our program is always here, 5.30 every Monday. We ask, want you to ask questions. We want you to phone in and drop topics that you want us to talk about, even on our media handle on Facebook. We are there. So keep watching. Keep listening, The Living Room. Equa TV International keeps you lifted 247. Fixes your day and makes it fulfilled with messages of hope and salvation. Sin and the devil 